Hi all, welcome to Advanced English with Steve UK, and I'm Steve. Now the best way to learn idiomatic expressions and how English speakers use them is to listen and watch English speaker conversations. You can try to learn by memorizing lists, but it doesn't really work. You have to learn them by listening to native English speakers using them in conversation. And that's exactly what you're going to see in this video. You'll see a number of conversations. The first part of them is listening. So you listen to them first to see how much you can understand. And then you'll actually see the actual words. Now, this is part of Chatterbox Zoom workshops. If you would like to subscribe, then you get a full transcript. You get uh, all the idioms, collocations, phrasal verbs, expressions that we use, not only from this session, but also from previous sessions as well. So consider joining. And in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe. Okay, let's go. I hope you enjoy the video. So we're going to look at some typical English native speaker conversations. They're actually dialogues, man, woman. Okay, let's go. Do you think Frank will put in an appearance at the party? I haven't seen him in yonks. He seems to have become a bit of a recluse lately. Do you think Frank will put in an appearance at the party? I haven't seen him in yonks. He seems to have become a bit of a recluse lately. I wouldn't have thought so. He's up to his eyes in work. Yeah, they has they haven't seen him in donkeys. It means so for a long time. Because is, is, is that what he actually said? He hasn't seen No, he said in Yonks. He said in Yonks. Okay. In donkeys here is the same. So for a long time. In donkeys is. Okay. What did uh, the woman say? That he's up in his... I know the expression that he's got a lot of work. So he's up in his eyes. He's uh, up in his eyes. Tears Fran up in his ears. <laughs> Francesca. I don't know. No, I, I didn't get that one. Alma. Up to his eyes. Up to his eyes. Okay. Watch. Do you think Frank will put in an appearance at the party? I haven't seen him in yonks. He seems to have become a bit of a recluse lately. I wouldn't have thought so. He's up to his eyes in work. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Francesca, you're frowning. Yeah, I'm trying to understand. I wouldn't have thought so. Watch then. He's up to his eyes. Oh, uh... Do you think Frank will put in an appearance at the party? I haven't seen him in yonks. He seems to have become a bit of a recluse lately. What's put in appearance mean? Put in appearance. That he doesn't uh -huh. show, show up. Show up. Show, show up. up. Show up. Show up. So come yeah. over. Yes, come come that, over. that he'll come. That he'll show. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's the mm -hmm. difference. It's a more emphatic way of saying it. Do you think he'll come to the party? But yes, who, who said show up? Was that you? I saw. Yes. Yeah. yeah, Francesca. Good. Yes. Will he show up? You could say, oh, we're having the office do on Thursday. Office do means office party. Okay. Office do. Do you think the boss will put in an appearance? He doesn't usually put in an appearance. He doesn't usually come. He doesn't like those kind of things. So it's emphasizing it. Okay. Now we've got a bit of a recluse. So reclusive is an adjective uh, and recluse is the noun. Recluse is the noun, yes. He's become reclusive, as Jan rightly said. It's someone who keeps to themselves, is avoiding company. I'm afraid I'm a bit of a recluse these days. <laughs> the only people I see are you lot. 
and online. <laughs> I love seeing you. I love seeing you. Okay, let's see what she said. Steve, did you did you say he keeps himself to himself? Keeps himself to himself. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's what, another expression. He keeps himself to himself. But what did you say? He keeps himself to himself. No, that I. Did you say that before too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yes, reclusive is the adjective. Is he's become very reclusive lately? When we did one about talking about characters, describing characters, we talked about someone keeping himself to himself, keeping themselves to themselves, about people who are reserved. They're a lone shy. wolf. Sorry? A lone wolf. No, lone wolf is stronger than that. If you're a lone wolf, you always do things on your own. Okay, it's different from being re re um, reclusive. At work, he's a lone wolf. He doesn't take any orders. He doesn't follow the party line. The party line, it means he doesn't follow the rest of... The party line is a political statement. Okay, you have to follow the party line. Okay, in, in Britain, they may not agree with the policies, but they've got to agree with what the government is saying if you're a member of the government that's the party line so if you're a lone wolf you're independent you go your own way it's different from being a recluse we talked about when people are reserved they keep themselves to themselves okay it could be because they're shy just that they don't like the other people or whatever all right now let's go back to what she says uh, I had a question. Oh, yeah, you had a question. Yes, the, in the previous, how oh, is it called? I can't, it can't come up in my head right now. But in the previous slide, you wrote the indeterminate article A without an N. And my question is, shouldn't the indeterminate article get an N there? Because it's before a noun that starts with a. Yeah. Sorry. Putting in, no, it's just that putting in an appearance, non a appearance. Did I make a mistake? I think you just skipped an N. Yeah. Do you think Frank will put in an appearance at the party? My fault, Francesca. Okay, I'm, okay. I made a mistake. It's a typo. And it's yeah. okay, so this way I know that I know the rule. <laughs> well spotted. Silly teacher. Oh dear, dear, oh dear. Yeah, an appearance, of course. Yeah. Okay. I've seen him in yachts. He seems to have become a bit of a recluse lately. Let's go back. I wouldn't have thought so. He's up to his eyes in work. All right. Whoever it was was getting up to his eyes wrong there we'll come back to i wouldn't have thought so in a moment up to his eyes not into his eyes someone said something different you up to your eyes i've heard some people say up to your ears i would never use that i had a, a disagreement with someone once about being up to your ears in work it, it, it doesn't sound right to you to me you're up to your eyes which means, if you're up to your eyes in work, it means, Marina, up to your eyes in work? To be snored under the work. All right, good. I'm glad you said snowed. Now, say it again. To be... Snowed. 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 Not snowed. But to have... Snowed. But say it again. To be snowed. snowed. To be snowed. To be snowed. snowed with work. With work. Or no, under you're, not, work. you're not snowed with work, Daniel. You're snowed. Under under the board, no? No. Snowed in? No, Francesca? No, I can that. say something else that I know, to, to be swamped with work. Yeah, but let, we'll come on to that in a minute. To be snowed? Up to your eyes? Th that's another one, all right. Jan, do you know, the, do you know this one, to be snowed? Right. Yeah? 
think it's the same no. like Francesca said, but you know, and it's not quite toi. No, Kasia. To be snowed under, under work. Right. Yes. To be snowed under with work. Snowed under with work. Not under with work. work. Snowed, snowed up. under with work. Under with work. Yeah. Yeah. Up to your eyes in work. Snowed under. You can mm -hmm. actually just make it shorter. I'm sorry. I'm absolutely snowed under. And leave off the with work. Okay. You're very busy. Someone else said something else. Uh, I think it was. I you. said to be swamped with work. Yeah. All right. To be swamped with work. And again, you don't have to say the whole phrase. I'm sorry. I'm absolutely swamped. What's a swamp? A bug. A bog. A march. A, a what, Daniel? A march. M. A R S H. Yes, but you said March. Okay. Marsh. Marsh. Sorry. Marsh. Okay. Is a bog. Okay. A bog. A, a, a muddy area. A waterlogged area. So if you're swamped, you, it's like trying to wade through, like you wade in water. You don't swim, you're walking in water against pressure so you're wading through work you're swamped by work the swamp is you know, rising and up to your eyes all right now she says i wouldn't have thought so she could equally well have said i don't think so i wouldn't think so I just use this because it's sometimes it's something we say sometimes. It adds a bit of emphasis. I wouldn't have thought so. You could use it in a different way after the event. Frank came to the party. I was there. Yes, I was there. Frank came to the party. I wouldn't have thought he'd arrive. Okay, but she's using it as a prediction here. And it's just a different way of saying it. It's a different emphasis. Different emphasis. Okay, let's try this one. Come on. Surely it isn't too much to ask. It's not as if it's out of your way. Just call in and bite on your way home from work. If you think I'm going to do that, you've got another thing coming. Okay, so what does he want her to do? Kasia? To call the girl. Kasia. He wants her to call his friend. However, she objected. She said that he's not. she's not going to do it. Um, Why do you think he wants her to call a friend? No, I couldn't hear at the beginning so clearly. So can you play it once again, please? Wait a minute. Come on. Surely it isn't too much to ask. It's not as if it's out of your way. Just call in and bite on your way home from work. Hmm. Francesca. Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, I believe he's asking her to call the guy because it's not such a big deal to call the guy call what guy um, are we talking about that guy that the reclusive one <laughs> no it's nothing to do with the last conversation it's okay i think with it. the last conversation that's why yeah. <laughs> daniel, <laughs> daniel any ideas <clears throat> daniel i can't hear you yes no oh, can you hear me now yeah okay i think he is asking her to do something, and he says, sure, it isn't too much to ask. Okay. And then I have a little bit lost. I'm a little bit lost on the following sentence. It's not as if you had to go out of your way. 
Yeah, that's okay. And then right. she says... Uh, okay, uh, wait, now, let's stay on that. Jan, did you get the first one? Yes, I think it was the guy's name was Tonev, and he was from work of the of the man. The Gu guy's name was what? Tony. Tony. <laughs> I don't know where that comes from. <laughs> don't worry, Jan, don't worry. You're not the only one who doesn't seem to be able to get it. He said nothing about calling anyone. Oh, no. Oh, Alma, I've forgotten you were there because I can't see you at the moment. Alma. Oh, okay. The Come way on. I... I he, he's, he wants her to pop in somewhere to get something or to make a stop on her way to do something for him. <laughs> well done. You'll see it in a minute. It doesn't call anyone because you hear call does not mean... Don't jump to conclusions. It doesn't mean call... On the phone. All right. Let's listen to her. If you think I'm going to do that, you've got another thing coming. Is she happy about it? No. 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 She what? won't give in. Yeah. What did she? And ask someone she else. Alma, because I know what, I know how good you are, Alma. At these. <laughs> okay. All right. Twa, did could you hear what she said? She say, if you think I could do it, do something else. Francesca. Yeah, she responds something more polite than she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, she's not actually very polite, really. She's quite aggressive. No. There's no? another thing coming. Who said that? Who said that? Kate. Kate. Yeah, Katya. Are you reverting to being called Kate, are you? After <laughs> I did this lovely gesture and started calling you Kasia because you prefer Kasia, and now you're calling yourself Kate. Make your mind up, girl. <laughs> you're Kasia to me now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's watch. Come on. Surely it isn't too much to ask. It's not as if it's out of your way. Just call in and buy it on your way home from work. It's not too much to ask. It's not too much trouble. I'm not asking the world of you. It's not as if it's out of your way. It means you do not have to... You do not have to do a big diversion on your way home out of your way okay now you can use out of your way in other ways i could say oh daniel's been really helpful to me he's gone out of his way to support me okay francesca you i can't see you at the moment you're raising your hand yes Please, I'd like to know what's the specific meaning of call in this case. Of what? Call in? Yeah. As drop Alma, in. As Alma said, to drop in. Drop in, to yeah. To pop in. Yeah. Drop oh, in. Pop in call. Okay. Mm -hmm. when... Francesca, you're going up to town. When you're in town, could you call into the post office, please, and buy me some stamps? I understand now. Thank you. Okay. But Steve, it was a little bit difficult because here, just call in, it wasn't mentioned where the lady had to call in. It was a little bit out of context. We didn't know much about the context. That's why we couldn't guess. Okay. All right. I accept that to some extent. But... You're going to have to get used to listening to some things where the context isn't actually explained to you. As long as you call in, which I think Alma got, to call in. Call in means drop in, pop in. Then you'd understand it. I think it's more that you don't know that call in can be used in that way. 
Yeah, point taken. I accept that. All right. If I put top in or drop in instead, I think you would have understood it. I hadn't emphasized that in actual fact, the call in part of it. I think it's because in your minds, you're thinking about call. Yeah, about phoning somebody. About phoning, and it's not. Okay. And I think also that uh, it added to the confusion that they were trying to link it with the previous conversation. Yes, because no, I didn't get these, that it was something all right, completely these, different. These are separate conversations. <laughs> They're not related. They've done it for purpose, yes. If you look at the pictures, there are different people. Okay. Ladies, are we feeling murderous tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hide here. Feeling murderous. Okay. So Daniel is obviously feeling he could murder me. All right. Let's have a look at what she says. If you think I'm going to do that, you've got another thing coming. I want to know this. Alma, did you know it? Yes, but I usually say you've got another thing coming. Now. But, th but that's yeah. a mistake. It's a thing. Think with K. Maybe. Maybe, Maybe both will you work. Think, you think I've made a typo, do you? Just because no, I think that. maybe both, uh, both work. Both. Very good, Francesca. Uh, sorry, Alma. Now, in actual fact, <laughs> this girl Ella, I've worked with before. She's a she's a voice actor. You, you've heard her do other things, and when she, she did the one with her boyfriend, you remember the one with Joey? Do you remember mm -hmm. doing that? Yeah. The one about the the travel the holiday. holiday yeah, the the holiday. Holiday. Yeah. yeah, she's great. She's done other things with me for, before, and mm -hmm. and she's super. And in the script, I put think right now you are saying oh, oh i think it should be thing and obviously when ella read it she said it in the way that she normally does which is thing and i want to think and yes you can say either but the correct version is think okay but it's because people in the past have misheard it. I know, I remember years ago, I think I, I probably used to say, you've got another thing coming. And people do say this. So you can say think or thing. And if you listen carefully to what she's saying, she actually says thing instead of think. In other nice. words, if you think I'm going to do that, you can think again. It's like dream on, like a dream on. Yeah, lovely. Uh -huh. Yeah. If you think I'm going to do that, dream on. Okay? If you think I'm going to do that, yeah, in your dreams. In your dreams, dream on. No way! Okay? Jan, are you with us? Yes. Good. I'm hearing all the time. <laughs> Toi, how are you doing? Yes, I will tell that to my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, Toa. Good now we know you, why, why, oh, no, it's why you up. come to the lesson so regularly. Now you know, we know what you have in the on the back in the back of your mind. Now we know what you have to put up with. To put up with means tolerate. To tolerate, to put up with. So you can say, Tony, if you think I'm doing that, you've got another think coming. And the next step, you can say, Tony, on your bike. Yeah, on your bike. Do we know that one, everyone? Do you know that one? No. Jan, do you know that one? No, never, never, never heard. On your bike. On your bike. Okay. That means you can pack and leave the place. You can what? Pack. P-A-C-K. It doesn't quite mean that. It doesn't mean you can pack and leave. That that's, that would just <laughs> it mean that. It doesn't mean you're about to get divorced or you're throwing him out. No, I'm not doing the washing up. 
It's your term on your bike. Okay. <laughs> On your bike, an old one is this. See if you can get it. You can go and take a long walk off a short pier. <sighs> Alma, do you know that one? Do you know what a pier? Do you know what a pier is? Yes. P i e r. E r like the Brighton Pier, no? Like the, the Brighton, Brighton the, the Royal, pier. The Royal, Royal pier. The yeah. sea. Okay, so you've got a pier. And you say to someone, you can take a long walk off a short pier. Mm. What would happen, Marina? You can drop down to the water. <laughs> yes, Marina. <laughs> it's the way you said it so seriously. You can drop down into the water. <laughs> yeah, you'd fall into the water, wouldn't you? You can take a, a long take walk. A, take a dive, yeah. <laughs> take a dive, yeah. If you wish. On your bike, the real meaning of that is? Get lost. Get lost. Yeah, sod off. Sod off, yes. I just looked it up on the Cambridge Dictionary and it says a rude way of telling someone to go away. <laughs> you are not so educated. Or you, we are not so well spoken. Well, Cambridge Dictionary, is that, you said that, didn't you, Francesca? Yeah. Yes, it can be that as well, to go away. All right, you kids, on your bike, go away. But it, it also, you can also use it to say, get lost, sort off. Back off. Or back off? Yeah. Back no. Off. no, back off. Bugger off. Bugger off. Bugger off, okay? Bugger off. All right. All these rude, it's a good job that Tanya isn't here. You know how upset she gets about all these rude words, Lady Tanya. Do you know what bugger off means, Jan? Can I someone... heard you telling about it, but... Okay, B-U-G-G-E-R, bugger off. It's used a lot in England. It can be used lightheartedly. Bugger off. Oh, bugger it. It's a light way of saying F off basically. Uh -huh. I, I also <laughs> covered this the other day. Sod off. Okay? Remember? Sod, sod off. off. Okay? You say sod off, which doesn't sound as strong as saying fuck off, does it? Sod off. Oh, okay. sodding hell! Instead of saying, oh, fucking hell. The English used to be thought of reserved and polite. Don't believe it. We you are don't. not. Uh, our language can be foul, and you'll hear it on television, okay? I'm just watching a super series at the moment. As soon as I finish, I'm going back to it because I'm halfway through an episode. And what is fair is foul, and what is foul is fair. Say it again. Say that again, Francesca. What is fair is foul, and what is foul is fair. Where does that go? It sounds like Shakespearean, that. Yes, yeah, Macbeth. It's Macbeth. Lovely Shakespearean phrases. Shakespeare oh, in, in, invented hundreds of them. Let's listen to this one. It's fun, this, isn't it? You'd really get a kick out of coming skiing with us. You're always saying that you gain to have a go at new things. Honestly, you'd have the time of your life. You'd really get a kick out of coming skiing with us. You're always saying that you gain to have a go at new things. Honestly, you have the time of your life. What's he suggesting, Jan? Did you get, could you get it? I get just the last part, but the first two parts was a bit misty for me. A bit misty, a bit foggy. A bit foggy, foggy, foggy yeah. Or muddy. Mm. A bit muddy. Sound can we can talk about sound being muddy sometimes actually. Twa, did you get it? I think they talk about skill kick off upcoming skill. Okay, coming coming skill. Okay, Kasha. I think that she's having time of her life that she, that she enjoy herself she and she 
yeah, and he's a little bit jealous about it. Marina, could you hear it at all? Yeah, <laughs> I I think he, he just blamed her in, in the fact she refused to, to ski with them again. And he, he thinks she missed her disadvantage. Okay, you're okay. close. You're closer. Blaming's a bit strong. Blaming. No, bit... no blame. Just uh, yeah, it's he's pretentious yeah. or something. Criticizing. Are you, you're close. Criticizing. You're... Yeah, she missed uh, her opportunity to do something okay, in this good. life. Well done, yeah. Marina. Mercedes, could you hear anything? Not so much things. I will manage a different technique to listen to this exercise. Yeah. Maybe you need headphones or something. Or something. Yeah, I will manage it. Yeah, Daniel. With many, with a lot of guests, a lot of guessing. I think that he reproached her to ruin everything, and that if she would go on behaving that way, he she would kick their friend off going to ski with them. All right. Reproach is a good word. Can you type that, please, Daniel? Okay. Reproach is a lovely word. It means what, Kasia? What does reproach mean? It rings the bell. I know this word, but I don't know how to explain it. Francesca? It means to reprimand somebody. Reprimand. Yes, reprimand's a bit, a little bit strong. But you, yes, you mildly reprimand, you you, crit, you criticize. So well well done, Francesca. So what did you make of what he said then, Francesca? I think he is also trying to convince her to go skiing because he said you'll get a kick out of it. And to get a kick out of it means you will enjoy it. Excellent. Okay. Alma, what did you get? Yes, and so he says, you say it, you're always your game to have a go at doing something. So you're ready, you're uh, open to do something. And now you're actually backing off from that, backing Very out. Good. Very backing good. Out. Yeah. Very good. Okay. All right. Let's see what she says. Okay. It's not so much that I don't want to go. I just can't afford it. I'm skint. I'm skint. Does she want to go? She can't afford it. Yeah, yes, she's but she's lack of money. Why can't lack she go? Money. Why can't she go? What did she say? She's what? She's broke. That's she's broke. She's red. She's skint. She's skint. 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 Okay. Skint. Steve, could we see the dialogues in writing from the preceding point, please? Which one? The paragraph. We had we we spoke about before. The one to get a kick out of the slide. Uh, yeah, which... don't be impatient. I'm just coming to it. Okay, I'm backing <laughs> off. <laughs> I'll take it. God, I take it back. I'm, I'm, it. I'm it. taking it back. I'm doing it. I'm doing it as a listening exercise for. Don't bite Alma. my head off. I, I bite my head off. That's good, Alma. As I usually say to you, Alma. Throw something at him again, please. <laughs> Jan, don't worry. We're always like this. I'm happy we have another guy in the group, man, because... <laughs> you needed some support. <laughs> yes, I, I can do with you with some help here. I'm going to play it. Now, I do two listening ones, and then I, and then I give you the words. Here you go, then. You'd really get a kick out of coming skiing with us. You're always saying that you gain to have a go at new things. Honestly, you have the time of your life. Okay. So. You'd really get a kick out of coming skiing with us. You're always saying that you gain to have a go at new things. Honestly, you have the time of your life. Okay. As, as Francesca got to get a kick out of something, is to enjoy it. Okay, I get a kick out of playing my guitar and playing the piano and singing. I get a kick out of seeing you lot. Sometimes. No, I do really. Okay, always. So you get a kick out of, is to enjoy. Gain, to have a go. Now, to have a go 
is to try. Mm. Can't do it. I can't do it. Oh, come on. Have a go. Try. Try. Gain to have a go. Alma. Mm -hmm. To be, to, if you're gaming, meaning you're open, you're willing to, to do something. Yeah. Be willing mm. to do but something. But you say, I'm game. What about doing there? You say, I'm game, meaning uh, you don't need to say actually what. Sometimes, just I'm game. Yeah, I'm game. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Game, to, I'm, I'm game. Anyone want count, to? Count on me. Hmm? Count on me. Yes. And depending on the context. Yeah. Or count me in. Count me in. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm, count, I'm, me in. I'm in. count me in. Count me in. Yes, that's a good one. Count me I in. Just, anyone? In. Anyone I'm... fancy? Anyone fancy going to see that new movie tonight? That new film tonight? Yeah, I'm game. Yeah, count me in. Count me in would be better than count on me. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Okay, count me in. To have the time of your life. You'll hear this in songs. There, there is a song, actually. I can't remember what it yes. is. The Queen's Dirty, Dancing. Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing. Of course it is. Dirty Dancing. And she says... It's not so much that I don't want to go. I just can't afford it. I'm skint. I'm skint. It's not so much. We're using this to qualify, okay? To qualify something. You could say, it's not so much I find English hard, I just don't have time to study. Okay, let's move on to the next one. You'll like this one. You, <laughs> la you ladies will like this one. <laughs> Stop nagging me. I'll do it tomorrow, I promise. I feel rotten. I think I've got a cold coming on. I've got a headache and keep sneezing and coughing. <clears throat> I may even have the flu. Okay. What's the matter with him? He's ill. He's ill. He's got a cold and sneezing. No, he's dying. He's di <laughs> dying, yeah. It's he's got, we talked about this the other day, didn't we? He's got man flu, hasn't he? Yes, indeed. You've got man flu. Jan, are you there? Men never have colds. They have man flu. They call it deadly disease for men. It's a joke. Yeah, Men are always suffer more than women do. So we have man flu. We have man flu. That's a joke. All right. Okay. What does she say? Being don't, sorry. Don't really sorry, sorry for, for yourself. yourself. Yes. You are yeah. not at the death door. Everybody, yeah, everybody <laughs> would think you are a death, uh, death door. Yes. All right. Yes. Now, as an example, there, Daniel, of an idiom. Remember that you've got to be word perfect on. on... At the doors of death. No. No. Now you are at the death door. Now you actually. You're using the French and Italian way of possessive there, okay, of, the, of. We talk about the gates of hell. That even, that even sounds Shakespearean, the gates of hell, instead of hell's gates, because it emphasizes it, okay? But we don't talk about the doors of death. We talk about at death's door. But what you said is at the death's door it immediately sounds wrong you change one word add a word and it sounds wrong okay so you have to say at death's door it's like when you're saying you're over the moon okay over moon over the moon means what to be happy. Excited. Happy. Yeah, excited. Excited. excited happy but if you said i'm going over the moon it would sound wrong Okay. Except if you work in the, at the NASA. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> yeah. She's become speechless. To, to put it another way, I'm lost for words. Miss, I feel rotten. 
I think I've got a cold coming on. I've got a headache and keep sneezing and coughing. <clears throat> I may even have the flu. I feel rotten. All right. We, we think of tomatoes being rotten. Your results in an exam can be rotten. You can feel rotten. We did idioms about feeling sick, not seriously ill, several months ago. So I, I feel rotten. I don't feel I don't feel very well. I feel rotten. I'm streaming with cold. Streaming. Why do I say streaming with cold? What does that suggest? Streaming. Like a runny nose? Yes, streaming. If something is streaming, stream, like river, stream, streaming, your nose is running, your eyes are running. I'm streaming with cold. I feel rotten. Streaming with cold. Streaming with cold, yes. You can type that one like now. He doesn't say I've got a cold. He says I've got a cold coming on. Marina, what does he mean? I've got a cold coming on. He feels like he be he can be ill. He will get a cold soon or already started All right. to be he, ill. He's got one around. Runny nose, headache, sneezing, coughing. Yeah, everything. See, what did, also, I'm trying to remember what you said, then, Marina. You said he feels like he's got a cold. It, yeah, he feels like he be, became be ill already. No, not became. He not already became, feels. He, he feels uh, he's becoming ill be, with becoming, the cold. Okay, he be, feels he is becoming. Ill. Yep. Okay. There is a misspelling. There is another misspelling. I keep sneezing and coughing. Spotted. Okay. Spotted. Yeah. I, I'm the worst. Sorry, oh, that I, was I, not a misspelling. That was, how do you say, how do you call that? It was a typo. A typo. I'll teach you an expression here. I am the worst proof lead proof reader in the word world proof reader proof, proof reader yes proof, proof reader. reader jan i can't see you let me come back up do you get that jan proof reader if you're proofreading something let's say you've done an essay for university you proofread it you go over it to check for any mistakes mm. and i look at my and i miss things so easily that was obviously a typo I, instead of putting and like when i didn't put an i tend not to notice them i'm too impatient when i'm editing now i said i'm the worst one in the world that's obviously an exaggeration okay but that's something that we use quite a lot no that's the worst thing in the world you need to do. Oh, I think I can learn English just by using a dictionary. That's the worst thing in the world you can do. Okay? That's the worst thing in the world you can do because oh, you, you won't hear any you won't hear any listening. It's an exaggeration. Not the worst thing in the world, is it? All right, let's try this one. Why does your mother have to keep having a go at me about being out of work? It's not as if I haven't tried, Bern say. She seems to think I sit on my arse all day watching Netflix. I've lost count of the number of applications I've sent out. Then, to cap it all, she has the cheat to say I drink too much. <laughs> as if you knock down more wine than I do. Is he happy? Oh, yes, he's delighted. Daniel, I love that response because that was a very British response. Okay? Like we talked about the other day, we did something. Well, I just used the one word. Did I do it here or was it somewhere else? What did you say? No, I remember it? this. He's delighted. Yes, yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, delighted. Terrific. We did it in, in about tone of voice. Mm. Oh, yeah. 
Terrific. It, it, I think it was one of the... No, it was the conversation about the, the couple, look, about the holiday plan. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. And he says, uh, delightful, delightful. Obviously, it doesn't mean delightful. It means, oh, God, no. Tone of voice means everything. He could, use, he could say delightful in a different way. Oh, delightful. Yeah. But you say... <laughs> Delightful, uh, delightful. Anyway, so what's he delighted about then, Daniel? Well, he's delighted about the fact that his mother-in-law is so gentle and kind to him because she just reproaches him a little bit the fact that he's jobless and she accuses him of not being on the job hunting seriously. And on top of all, to top it all, uh, she, sa she says that he likes his beer or his wine a little too much. Yeah. What does he say at the end? Mm, she has the chic to say that I drink too much. Yeah. Okay, it finish it finishes off by saying something else. That that I won't repeat because <laughs> you won't repeat. that was very good, Daniel. D Daniel, the more we chat together, the more that you're developing a British sense of humor as well. In the way that you can the irony is coming across in your voice, which is great. Marina, what did you make of it all? Uh, I actually I don't remember <laughs> with what he did finish up. Kasha has disappeared. But, okay. No, Kasha is but here. I, I got everything which Daniel explained already, but... Kasha, did you hear it or were you with, with the kids? <laughs> okay. Alma. Yeah, I think that Daniel summed it up perfectly. She... Was all, not only is criticizing him because he's a lazy ass, he's a lazy bone, and sitting on his arse without actively searching for a job, but he also is drinking too much and he likes to drink, whatever. Yeah. He's, he says he's drinking too much. Yes. And he says, uh, actually, uh, the girl, his partner, uh, is a strong, stronger drinker than than he is. She you, she knocks down yeah. more than he does. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah, that one. Stop getting your knickers in it, West. Don't take any notice of her. Stop getting your knickers in it, West. Don't take any notice of her. What did she say, so, Francesca? What did she, forget the so at the end? That's a mistake. What did she say? What did she say, Francesca? Do not pay attention too much to what the mother-in-law yeah, says. What does she actually say? Stop taking the niggas out of her. <laughs> no. <sighs> Daniel will know the phone, so I won't ask him because we've done it before. No, I haven't. Uh, I've missed that, honestly. All right. Toi, did you get it? I can't hear you, Toi. Sorry, I, I don't. Kate? Kasha, Jan, did you get it? <laughs> I think get it. something about not paying too much attention. Yes, I wondered if you, I wondered if you'd got the idiom because of you. The idiom, no, no, unfortunately not. Marina, mm -mm. I didn't get it. All right, we'll come to it in a minute. Okay, let's go back to what he's saying. Why does your mother have to keep having a go at me about being out of work? It's not as if I haven't tried, Ben say. She seems to think I sit on my arse all day watching Netflix. I've lost count of the number of applications I've sent out. Then, to cap it all, she has the cheat to say I drink too much. As if. You knock down more wine than I do. To have a go at someone. To have a go? It's like to nag. It's the same. Yes, Alma. Mm, to have yeah. a go. To nag. To carry on with something. Yeah. Carry on about mm. something. Now, I've 
I've included in that because you will hear English people using it a lot. It's like a filler, like you have you have in your languages. <laughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> Alma, you've got a filler echo, word. Echo. But echo. But no, you, you've got you, you, the, the other one. I'm thinking of yours. It doesn't mean it's not the same. Mm -hmm. uh, which I just could not understand why people kept saying it when I lived in Italy. It was, allora, allora. Allora, allora. 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 I was told it meant then. Oh. I mean, it doesn't. It's, it's just a filler word. It is a filler word. You are saying it, okay, but not with any strength. It's just a filler word. And you, you'll hear politicians using it. You'll hear articulate, well-spoken people on television using it. Sit on my ass, sit on my backside, if you want to put it polite, more politely. Sit on my backside. I didn't put this in red, but I've lost count of the number. That is another common expression. I've lost count of the number of times I've told you. Toi? I've lost count of the number of times I've told you about the third person singular and adding an S. With me? Yeah. I'm kidding you, Tatwa. Okay, but sometimes I remind you. Remember when you say he play instead of he plays. Okay? Because you don't like S's. But I'm joking with you. I've lost count. Of, I've lost count of the number of times I've done something. To capital... To top it all. It's like to summarize it. If you cap something. Now, it, it can mean if you cap something, you, you like, you put like, it. Uh, it's like this, the, was this, was it the stroke that broke the camel's back, the, something the, like that. The straw, the straw. The straw, the straw, yeah. The straw. Oh, yes, the straw, yes. Mm. You know that um, one, Francesca, do you know that one, the straw that broke the camel's back? And no, but I was thinking about something like to finish it off could be a way to explain it as well, maybe. Yeah, but you wouldn't use it there. It it, it does mean that in a, in a sense, but it does it, it doesn't quite work there. As if it weren't enough, no? To, no as if it that's, weren't. That is excellent, Alma. As if mm. that was if that's not enough, mm. if that wasn't enough. Uh, last but not the least. Very similar. Last but not least, it's not quite as strong. Okay? It's not quite as strong, Kasia. To cap it all. She has the cheek, the mm. nerve, okay? The courage. It, 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 it's not courage. The okay. impudence. The impudence. Excellent. The impudence. Excellent. The cheek, the nerve. All right. Let's give you a nice big word here. Not really long, but more complicated word. And you will, you can hear this in conversation as well. It begins with T. She has the T. Come on, Francesca, you're going, for, you're going for proficiency. Tem. She has the Daniel. She has the Dem. Kasha. Tem. Teme. T. Yes. She has the temerity, T-E-M-E-R-I-T-Y. Okay. I don't necessarily expect you to know that at C1 level, but it's a good one. It's a good one if you do know it. Okay. He has the, the audacity. Audacity. Yes. We, audacity. We, we have done this before, Daniel, because you actually said audacity last time we talked about it. It wasn't very long ago. Would you say also the goal? G A L L. Yeah. I gave you that last time as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, we talked about it. It, it, it was only a few sessions ago. Le Gaulle, G A L L. Mm. As if. Sarcastic. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As if. You're basically saying it's not true. As if. I wish. No. No, the I wish wouldn't work there, but we no. do use I wish. Okay. She has the cheek to tell me I drink too much. I wish. You don't wish that you drink too much. 
Okay. If she said she has the cheek to tell me I'm rich, you'd say I wish. Okay. But here, no, as if. It doesn't work here, I agree. As if. To knock down. Obviously, you can knock someone down when you're driving. Here, we're talking about knocking down wine. Okay. Drink. Drink. Knocking down drink. Knock down drink. Oh, no. I'm not, you know, that's, that's, no, you've poured me too much whiskey. Oh, it'll do you good, man. Knock it down. Okay. Knock it will put hair on your chest. Hairs on your chest. I think we need to use a plural, hairs on your chest. Maybe you can say hair on your chest. I'd say hairs on your chest, yeah, to knock it down. Stop getting your knickers in a twist. Don't take any notice of her. Francesca, so you don't know this one? No, the knickers in a twist. You know what your, knick you know what your knickers are, don't you, Francesca? I don't believe so. Alma, explain. It's, under, it's the underwear, the Yandies. Oh, yeah. Now, Americans don't talk about knickers. It's a British thing. Your knickers, and schoolgirls wear knickers, but women can talk about their knickers as well. Usually, the politer is panties, all right? The Americans have an expression. I, I used this when I was in America once, and they didn't know what I was talking about. And my then American girlfriend said that they did have a similar expression. It was to not get your panties in a wad or your panty hose in a wad. A wad, W A D, a wad is like, like an altogether, like mm. yeah, like a clump. Mm. Okay. But shouldn't it be stop getting your knickers? Yes, it's another typo. <laughs> yeah. Yes, another yeah. time. Yeah. Jan, you know that us guy, that we guy, we don't wear knickers, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> hey! <laughs> How do you know? Do you want to see my lovely red ones? No, please. No, are you sure? <laughs> no, don't I can feel, I can, don't feel you obliged. Feel no, they're red, lacy ones. No, no, just wait a minute. Oh, please, not. Please don't. <laughs> All right. Although knickers are worn by ladies, you can say this to men as well. Yes. The, the expression to be humorous, you can say, you can tell that to a guy. Yeah, that, you can say this to that a guy. Make it more that make it funnier. It didn't make it any funny. It's just the same thing. Like going back to murder a cup of tea. The thing which I keep going on about with Daniel, I could well, well have said... He, he, I could, he won't ever forget that one. No, I will <laughs> never forget that. But I could well have said, I could well have said means, I could have said, I could well have said is emphasising it. I could well have said. Daniel, stop getting your knickers in a twist. I actually did a short about that. Don't get your knickers in a twist. Okay. I think Jan liked that one. So get your knicker in a twist is more like anger, knickers. more like confusion. Knickers. For me, it was knickers. That was confusion, confusion. for me. Confusion. Okay. Confusion. You've got things wrong. You're getting things wrong. Don't get confused. Don't get. Don't get upset. Don't get confused. Don't get upset. All right. Here I've got my work. This is my workman's voice. You want me to replace all the kitchen shelves as well, though? Okay. Of course. It goes without saying that I'll pay you extra if you're able to do that too. It's going to cost a fair bit for the materials as well as my time. They don't come cheap these days. I'll give you an estimate and you can have a think about whether it's worth it. Okay, then. I'm putting on a slight northern accent here. Do you want to listen again? You want me to replace all the kitchen shelves as well, love? Of course. It goes without saying that I'll pay you extra if you're able to do that too. It's going to cost a fair bit for the material as well as my time. They don't come cheap these days. I'll give you an estimate and you can have a think about whether it's worth it. Okay, then. Kasia, what's it about? The one who wants to replace all the shelves in the kitchen. 
The man agrees and the woman said that it goes without saying that she will pay extra. And the man points out that she has to take in, takes into account material and time as well. Very good, Kasia. Okay, let's, we'll have to move on. So let's have a look at it. Okay. So you want me to replace all the kitchen shelves as well, love? Okay, that's straightforward, isn't it? Notice the love at the end. You will hear this if you come to Britain. You use all Never the time. Okay, like we do, do it. Yeah, you, you you live here. You live here, Marina. You know it. Okay, love. I use it a lot. All right. I wouldn't use it with a man. This sounds very sexist, but it's not really. I wouldn't use it with a man. But if there's a woman, someone I've got a good relationship with, I, okay, love, I could use it with you. I would use it with you because I know it. All right, love. Okay. Use it with my family. Kind of lovey. And you'll hear that as well. In different parts of the country, you'll hear duck. All right, my duck. All right, my duck. All right, oh, my love. Pet. pet. All right, then, pet, love. But love, you get into a taxi driver. Okay, where do you want to go, love? Okay, so I frequently tell, because I use it, I frequently <laughs> tell people, because I'm calling in love, because I'm calling you love, I'm not being romantic with you. It's how we talk. Okay, okay, cash love? Yeah. Mm. What a shame that you don't call me love with your true feeling. I do love you, really, Kasia. <laughs> Fortunately, you're of my... Of course, I am as we, <laughs> and, and as we agreed, but I'm waiting for you to come. <laughs> I'm waiting for us to meet when you come to England. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see what she has to say. Of course. It goes without saying that I'll pay you extra if you're able to do that too. Okay, it goes without saying. It's obvious. Okay. It goes without saying, it goes without saying that some of these you are going to find difficult. Wait a minute, Francesca. It goes without saying. I knew that one. Good. I'll try you on the next one then, Francesca, now. Now, as you'll oh, be... It's not finished, Steve. We, we are still waiting about... She has to take something into account and he... I am playing give her... it, Daniel. I'm about to play it. Oh, it's really slow tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill him one of these days. I promise you. I have to move my mouse around. I was just finishing. <laughs> just moving his <laughs> mouse, and my coffee is cold. Alma, please get him for me. <laughs> Oh, I'm having too much fun. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying to Francesca. But, but I, we must recognize all the hard work and effort you put into this. Huh? I, have put, I have put a lot of hard work in this all, all afternoon preparing this one. I'm sure he's exhausted. I am. I'm absolutely knackered. And you're not helping. But, but I, I must congratulate you on the good job, because it's really helpful. Apart from the typos. That doesn't matter, because... Yeah, you, you, get, you have joy. Francesca has joy in pointing them out to me. <laughs> Francesca, I was about to say, let me come back to it. I think it's this one. Of course. It goes without saying that I'll pay you extra if you're able to do that too. Frances what I was going to say is Francesca says, I know that one. Uh, so I was going to say, all right, clever clogs. Clever clogs. Do you know what that is? You say that to, to children. Clever clogs. Clogs are the wooden shoes that Dutch people know. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. They call someone a clever clogs. It's usually said jokingly. Okay, clever clogs. You know, yeah, I, somebody I, I, that I, I, thinks uh, he or she knows everything. Yeah. Okay, oh, I could say to get back at you for being cocky, C O C K Y. It's it's not rude, it's, it's no rude in front. You're being cocky. I know this. Don't be so cocky. Okay. Okay. Or smarty that. pants? Yeah, don't be a smart ass. Okay. Smart I, I, say to, I can say to Francesca then, 
Okay, smart ass. You know that. Let's see if you know the next one then. It's going to cost a bit. Go on. A bit for the material as well as my time. They don't come cheap these days. I'll give you an estimate and you can have a think about whether it's worth it. Okay then. Cost a fair bit. What what does he mean, Francesca? I'm they just... will cost a lot, quite yes. a lot of money. Yes, for the materials. They... And time. Now, now I should have highlighted this. They don't come um, cheap. They don't come cheap. It basically means they're not cheap. Okay? Mm -hmm. A decent computer doesn't come cheap. It's nothing to do with arriving. It's nothing to do with coming, really. It just means that they're not. Okay, it's a good one. It's a good one for listening. Whether you're C1, whether you're going for C1, like Jan and Twa, or C2, it, it, it don't come cheap. It's one which you could find, Jan and Twa, you could well find in the reading section, the reading and use of English when you're doing that part of it. Okay, where you've got to find the right phrase. Are you with me, John? Do you understand? Yes. That? Don't, uh, come, it doesn't come cheap. Okay. I'll give you an estimate. Now, this also you need to know. We're using, I think, here. Francesca. Did you know that? So you can have a think? Yeah, you can think about it. Yes. To think about it. But we, we're saying to in have color. a think. Mm -hmm. and we, we, we often, sorry, Marina? Is it think, think over? You can think over it, okay? You can think about it. But we often use it in its noun, noun form. Have a think about it. Okay? I'm... It's the same I mean, as mull over. Sorry? Mull over is the same. I wouldn't use mull over here, but you can mull over. You can consider it mull over something. We were talking about you coming over to London soon, Kasia. And I could say, I'll have a think about coming into London to meet up with you. But it really depends on how I'm feeling after I've been to the doctors. Okay. But I'll have a think about it because I've been delighted to meet, to meet you and the kids as well. Where shall we go? Tower of London, British Museum. Fish and chips. <laughs> I keep telling, right. Kasia was asking me about coming over and she said she wants to eat fish and chips. And she stayed in the centre of London near the Natural History Museum which is the bottom of Hyde Park. And it's not is it the West End. In that part of London, in the central, I don't know if you're going to find, if, if, strangely enough, I don't know if you're going to find a fish and chip shop. You remember, Kasia, we talked about it. Yeah, I remember. Because it's, everyone likes fish and chips, whatever walk of life you come from, whatever walk of life, it means walk of life, Francesca? Anyone from any social rank. Very good. Any Very social good. status, any walk of life. Everyone loves fish and chips. Can I ask something, please? Yeah. You say whatever walk of life you come from, right? Yes. And Francesca has rephrased saying... People from any social rank. Whatever social rank you come from. Yes, social rank. Yeah, whatever area you come from. Okay, we've done two hours. I am bye going bye to make, I am going to make a video of this. <laughs> bye bye everybody. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. So, did you find that useful? Were there many which you didn't understand there? I would imagine so. They're not easy. Okay? But by seeing them, listening to them, using conversation, then that is the best way to learn them. Make a note of them. If you subscribe to our workshops, and I'll put the link in the description, then you will get transcripts. You'll get information about those idioms which have been used. 
so you can use them yourself. I thoroughly recommend joining. It's the very best way of improving your English to C1 advanced and to C2 proficiency level. Okay, hope to see you there and take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.